my father arrived in the United States in 1962 when he was six years old. In the er very early period of the revolution, uh, the attitude of the Cuban government was, well, if you don't really want to support this process, the, this movement that we believe in, you're more or less welcome to go, to leave. And when economic scarcity started to occur, it was difficult to find things on the shelves. Um, my grandmother was really one who motivated the decision. And, and so it was less about politics, but, but to say, this situation is crazy, this is affecting our quality of life, let's go to the U.S. And, and even for my father, my, you know, as a, as a young boy, he remembers that the notion that they would go to the U.S. was not something totally strange because Cubans went to the U.S. often. I mean, people that came from middle, upper middle class, more wealthy families, went there often, went to places like Miami to vacation and shop and things like that. A lot of well-known Cubans studied uh, in the U.S. Fidel Castro himself spent a lot of time in the U.S. So it was not, it was not a, a strange notion that my father would end up there, but he didn't have any sense that it was going to be this sort of permanent thing. So they arrived, they spent a few months in Miami, and then they moved, immediately moved to New York. And I think that that affected a lot both my grandparents and my father's point of view on Cuba and their issues because um, I think if you grow up in Miami or in places like Union City, New Jersey, where there's just a very, very strong concentration of Cuban Americans or Cubans, you're kind of surrounded by Cuba and the issue 24-7. You know, it's on TV, it's on radio, it's on everything. Um, and, and my father wasn't, my grandparents weren't, and, so, and, and they didn't grow up around a lot of Cubans necessarily. They, they knew some, um, but they grew up in a much more multicultural kind of environment, I think. And that, I think, moderated their perspective on issues. Um, in terms of how they view Cuba today, I, I think getting my grandparents to talk about political issues is very tough. At this point, they've said, my life is here, you know, and, and I've been here for, for almost you know, 50 years, and my life is here. My, my father is someone who still carries, cares about it very much. Um, as I do. And I got into it not because of any family thing necessarily, but because I got interested in the history in, in school. And then I said, well, this is, a, this is a good country for me to study because I have some connection to it. I went back to Cuba in 2005. I was the first member of my family to go back in 40-something years, uh, which was an incredible honor. I got to visit cousins, you know, first cousins of, of my father that, that he used to be very close with as a child. And you know, remember, he left at six years old, but he still remembers all of this very vividly. I got to visit them and meet them and stay with them and hang out with their families, and it was a wonderful experience. And, and that kind of connection is great, and you know, now I have email contact with them and phone contact, and so that, that bridge has been, um, has been built. And, and that's something that I think is uh, incredibly important for kind of bridging the divide that exists between you know, the Cuban Americans and, and, and Cuba, kind of breaking that isolation in, in a good way. I mean, it's, it's human contact, it's building relationships, it allows you to share your perspectives in an open way, and we didn't agree on everything. Um, but that's an incredibly positive thing that has to happen more.